The recruiting numbers in 2023 keep piling up. Oregon's two latest verbal commitments in next year's recruiting class are on the defensive side of the ball. We're talking about them today. And would you rather have a big-time quarterback or a big-time pass rusher? If you could only have one. Hopefully, Oregon could have both. Here we go. You are Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Oregon Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, it is that time once again for Locked On Ducks. I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin, D1 play-by-play broadcaster and lifelong Oregon Ducks fan. Thanks for making this your first listen or your first view of the day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with the Ducks, even during these summer months. Like, comment, subscribe, wherever you're listening to or watching this show. I appreciate all of you out there who have already done so. We hit 500 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Thank you every way to Sunday and twice on Tuesday. That's just a weird saying that I have sometimes, usually said in frustration on the golf course. i tell you what's not frustrating, winning recruiting battles that come down to the Ducks and Oklahoma, but that is what Oregon just did. There are two commitments. I was going to a show yesterday, but full disclosure, was not in a great frame of mind. Everything is okay now, and I was also waiting on a, a second commitment to drop, so I figured it's better to just uh, put them all in one episode. And so Oregon's got two commitments on the defensive side of the ball, verbally in the class of 2023, and they're both defensive backs. Four-star safety Tyler Turner from Brennan High School in San Antonio, Texas. We'll get to that in a moment. Uh, has catapulted the Ducks' current 2023 recruiting rankings at the high school level into the top 25, even before a quarterback has committed. A little bit more uh, later in the show as well. All right, I'll just tell you right now. It, it looks like for the Ducks and the quarterbacks who we've been talking about here on the show, obviously out of the running for Jaden Rashada, but Dante Moore looking like it might be trending upwards while is Avery Johnson trending uh, a little bit downwards. It seems like he's going to be going to Kansas state after all, but you never know. Things can change. It looked like we were going to get Nico instead. He's going to Tennessee. You never know. Things can change, but uh, Tyler Turner becomes Oregon's seventh verbal commitment of the class of 2023. He joins jury on Dickey who I really hope Oregon's going to be able to keep as a uh, pledge because it looks like he's trending towards maybe being a five-star receiver when it's all said and done. He's already a highly rated four, but he is uh, he has been lighting it up over the last couple of weeks at, at the OT7 camp in Vegas and just on the recruiting trail in general. He's been really, really good in, uh, in that sense, impressing a lot of scouts and coaches and teams out there. Um, so Oregon needs to work hard to be able to keep him committed to the Ducks because other schools – notably uh, Miami, but others are, are going to want to to try and flip him from Oregon. But uh, seventh verbal commitment of the class, and Colin Gill becomes the eighth. We'll get to him in just a sec. But it's Jury on Dickey. It's Cole Martin, a four-star corner from Arizona. Ashton Cozart, another guy we flipped from Oklahoma. This wasn't a flip. This was a decision that we beat out with the Sooners. So that, uh, that Alamo Bowl, thankfully, it seems that not too many people watch that, or perhaps more accurately, they didn't take it into account. But... Uh, Ashton Cozart, wide receivers in there. Dante Dowdell, the big running back. Cody DeCambra, a safety. And then there's a uh, Tavita Pamee, who's a 6'3", 315-pound, three-star defensive lineman from the state of Utah, who was uh, the Ducks' first verbal commitment in the class of 2023. So Turner comes in, and he was down to Oregon and Oklahoma. He had offers from other schools as well. And, and given that he's from the state of Texas, a lot of names in there that, that you would kind of suspect would be you know, in on a, a guy of this caliber. But you've got Baylor, you've got Auburn, you've got Arkansas, TCU, Texas, Utah, USC. So a couple Pac-12 schools in there. He is from the state of Texas. And shout out to Matt Palich, who's his primary recruiter, one of the secondaries coaches, along with Demetrius Martin, of course, whose son Cole is the guy that I alluded to just a moment ago. But uh, Turner, a guy that comes from a state that I, I talked about with John Garcia a couple weeks ago uh, here on the show, I think it was last week actually, might be one that that, that we start to hit harder on, on the recruiting trail. Not that we're going to just completely forget California or Arizona or Washington or try to keep the in-state guys, even though Riley Williams is uh, deciding to play his college football elsewhere, probably going to go down to Miami. But I, I think generally speaking, there haven't been uh, a whole ton of recruits from the state of Texas 
who have come up to Oregon over the years. There have been a lot of good players. There have been some, right? Oregon's had success getting a safety out of the state of Texas in uh, in just the last few years, actually. A guy by the name of Verone McKinley. You might have heard of him. First-team All-American a season ago. And then, of course, um, unceremoniously was not drafted in the 2022 NFL draft, which I still can't believe. I get his physical traits weren't elite, but that was still a, a little bit surprising. But I'm curious to see how big of a recruiting footprint Oregon can put down in, in the state of Texas here because there's a lot of really good players there. David Hicks is another guy that Oregon has in their sights. I would love to be able to, to get him, but that's certainly going to be a really tough battle. But those are the sorts of players who are coming out of there all the time. Kamari Terrell in, in the class of 2022. Yeah, 2022 uh, as well, three-star DB. So Oregon's starting to get uh, just some bodies in the secondary. And that's something that they kind of need at, at this point in time. When you look at the secondary right now, we've had a lot of losses from last year, right? No Verone McKinley, no Mikhail Wright, no DJ James. You lose Jalen Davies, who looked like a guy who might slide in and, and be a regular rotational player. But you do have names on there like Darren Barkins, like Avante Dickerson, who haven't played a ton, but you know we, we know that they're there. Steve Stevens in the secondary as well. But the reason I think that this staff is going after members of the secondary so hard is twofold. Number one, if you're going to build a defense or a championship caliber team from the defense up, you've got to be recruiting at an elite level at all three levels of your defense. And so far, Oregon's had the most success getting guys in the secondary. I think the linebacking unit has got a bunch of depth beyond this year. If, if both Sewell and Flo leave, I think you still have a lot of really good players. I think Devin Jackson is going to be a stud. I'm really high on him. Keith Brown is a, a solid player. There are a number of names, Harrison Taggart as well, four-star in the class of uh, 2021. So th there are plenty of names there who I think you can see as kind of being the next uh, unit, the, the next wave of, of Oregon linebackers in that sense. But the secondary little bit less clear. So I, I like having as many bodies back there as possible. And, you know, the Ducks are, maybe it's by chance, but I, I don't know if it's completely coincidental that they were hitting the secondary hard a year after you lost a bunch of starters and also looking ahead to next year, you could be losing a number of players again. I, I mean, it, it's not clear at this point in time. You have to see how the 2022 season plays out and how guys are able to elevate their their draft stock and, and where they're at in, in that sense. And I don't think Oregon has a ton of guys who could get drafted, but that doesn't mean they won't leave to go to the draft, right? I mean, we saw that this year. C.J. Verdell left, didn't get drafted. Uh, Devin Williams left, didn't get drafted. And like all, all those sorts of guys, right? So you could have that sort of situation again, but Christian Gonzalez could leave after this year if, if he does really well. Dante Manning could leave after this year. Triquez Bridges, I, I believe, could uh, could go as well. Let me double check uh, that. But I believe he is a guy who, who was there in 2020. So if he goes 2020 and then 2021, 2022, there, there's your three years. And yeah, he's actually been here for uh, for a, a few seasons. He was uh, committed 20. Yeah, so he's 20 class of 2019. So He's got some some good physical traits, right? He's got the size to go to the NFL. I don't think he's put it all together yet, and, and I'm not even confident that he's a guy who would leave. But if you're just looking at looking at it from a pure numbers standpoint, we don't know what Trajan Williams is going to bring, four-star safety in the class of 2022. But I, I think that the coaching staff is seeing what, what I'm talking about here, which is you're going to have some departures after this year, whether it's via the transfer portal or uh, to the NFL draft. And you need to be able to to bring guys in and just have enough bodies there so you don't run into a situation like this staff had uh, at the running back position when they came into camp this year. Uh, a situation you want to find yourself in on a personal level, if you're a fan of gambling, is going to bet online. Your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest developments, league reviews and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Go Mariners, who won an absolute thriller today. Um, the A's are just terrible, but I'll take it. Bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to esports and scores, and is the best spot for all your scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online is where the game starts. 
that situation that this staff found themselves in at one point during uh, spring practice this year, kind of when it was just getting going. You had like two scholarship running backs on the roster. It was Byron Cardwell and Sean Dollars. And then you had to walk on and Aaron Smith taking carries. But, you know, they, they've since been able to add bodies there. And so I think it's, you know, a, kind of a similar situation to that where you just want to have uh, enough guys. And, and the other player who who's committed in the class of 2023 now verbally is Colin Gill a three-star cornerback slash nickel. I haven't seen a guy uh, described that way, but that leads you to believe, obviously, he's not going to be a a starting caliber player per se. doesn't mean he won't play, but he's not somebody who's going to line up as an outside corner the way that Gonzo and Manning probably will this year for the Ducks on the defensive side of the ball. But he's coming from St. John's High School in Washington, D.C. That's a long way from that. That is a long, long way from home uh for for the staff to to get a commitment that's literally that's got to be one of the longest flights in, in the country like one of the longest ones that that you could make but not a not a highly sought after guy Colin Gill he chose the Ducks over uh, a bevy of other schools there there were some decent offers on there but uh you know Cincinnati Michigan Utah Washington Washington State those are the most notable ones so not exactly a, a Jaleel Florence type where he's looking at like Oregon and USC or uh, you know, Jaden Wayne's looking at like Alabama and Georgia LSU. It's not that sort of guy, but that does mean he can't become a good player, of course. But I, I just think adding depth there once again is, is kind of what you need to be doing when you, you think about how quickly things can change. I mean, going into last year, I thought Oregon had plenty of linebacker depth. And then three injuries later, right? Noah Sewell missed a couple of games. Justin Flo was out for the entire year. You look up, you're like, wait, who's who's playing linebacker and Jeffrey boss has stepped in and did more than an admirable job to the point where I expect him to play quite a bit this year. But I, I, I think that when you look at Oregon secondary going forward, you, you could have a number of departures because the other thing you have to consider, right? Uh, Tyler Turner is a safety. He's about six feet, six foot one. Uh, so maybe could play strong safe. Like, uh, that's kind of an in-between size for, uh, for strong safety and free safety. But you could lose Jamal Hill. He could come back as well, but he could leave. Bennett Williams will be gone. He's a secondary caliber player. You don't know what all the other guys are going to do. So I, I, I think that adding these sorts of guys is uh, certainly a, a priority for the staff. And that leads me into uh, my own kind of mailbag generated style question here. And if you ever want a question of yours answered on the show, you can tweet with the hashtag ask LOD pod, or you can just DM me at smalls underscore 55 or at locked on ducks are the Twitter handles. You can hop in the YouTube comments as well. I check those every day, ask me a question, get it answered here on the show. But I was thinking about the class of 2023 and, and where the, the recruiting focus needs to be, which I've touched on a little bit here on the show. But I, I just had the question, if I could only have a big time quarterback or a big time pass rusher, which one would I rather have? Now, obviously, in a world where you can have both, I would really like to have both. <laughs> I, think, I think we would all like to really have both. Getting, uh, you know, a, a Dante Moore or, um, sorry, I had a little moment of like indigestion there. And it's, anyway, so <laughs> that was bad. So I had dinner not that long ago, and I think that I'm uh, that I'm feeling the tri tip that I had, which was really good. Which is really, but we don't have a barbecue. You can set off the the smoke alarms in your house as well. So just uh, be wary of that for for all you all you cooks out there. But uh, if I had to choose between a, a quarterback and a defensive lineman, I think most fans would jump to, well, you want to have a big time quarterback, right? That's going to draw another recruits. I mean, that's the most important position. You got to have a quarter, and I understand that. Oregon, in the grand scheme of things, is pretty light on bodies. Right. They added uh, Jake Van Dyne from uh, Missouri State. But I mean, that's a walk on practice squad guy. Right. Like that's not a, a legitimate player. But you've got Jay Butterfield. You've got Ty Thompson. What is Bo Nix going to do next year? We don't really know at this point in time. The indications have been he'll be one and done at Oregon. But if his draft stock isn't as high as he'd like, maybe he wants to come back for a second season in Eugene, depending on how things actually uh, decide to go. But speaking of Dante Moore, by the way. Before I answer my own question, Oregon got a crystal ball for him from Steve Wilfong on 24 seven sports. That's all I'll say. I'm just, I'm just reporting what I read and what I hear. That's all I can do. I'm not a journalist. I don't have sources. I read things. I talk to people and then I report back in that sense, but not, a, not, I'm not, not claiming to be a big J journalist here. Cause I'm most definitely not. 
So that would be nice. I'm not opposed to that at all. But the answer to my question is I'd rather have a big time defensive lineman. If it were a Kayvon Thibodeau type player, I think, well, I know that Hicks is the, the highest rated of the bunch and Oregon is still very, very strongly pursuing him. His most recent visit to campus, I, I heard went very well uh, and that he was pretty impressed and Oregon perhaps is, you know, in a better position to land him than they were even uh, maybe a month or two ago. But David Hicks is a name. Jaden Wayne is a name who was a five star. Now I think he's a highly rated four star. That stuff can fluctuate a little bit, but he looks like a pretty big time player. Mateo Uyunglele, the brother of Clemson quarterback DJ Uyunglele, is uh, coming out of St. John Bosco, the class of 2023. Those, those are kind of the three big names. And if I could only have one, I'd probably go with David Hicks. I, I, I'd probably have Mateo second and then. Uh, Dante Moore third and Jane Dwayne fourth if I had to put those four in order but the reason I, I think I'd rather have a big time defensive lineman is because we've got a defensive head coach and I think from a recruiting standpoint our expectations as fans are pretty high especially with how they've salvaged this class of 2022 and I think they should remain high that's how the staff was assembled I mean when they're going to put together the first word on most of the guys was he's a great recruiter. Now, I think the the least successful recruiter at this point in his career uh, of the group would be Kenny Dillingham, but Lachlan has been a great recruiter. Junior Adams has always recruited really well wherever he's been. Tosh Lupoy has been a Pac-12 recruiter of the year. We know what Dan Lanning did when he was back at uh, at Georgia. Matt Powledge, the DBs coach, uh, coached uh, or recruited and coached uh, Jalen Petrie, Big 12 player of the year, defensive player of the year, I think, or first team all Big 12. He, he was a really, really good player. So the recruiting expectations are understandably high. But they're even higher for me on the defensive side of the ball than the offensive side of the ball. And though each recruiting cycle is different and, and you are going to have some variation here and there, just depending on, you know, a, a wide variety of factors that are in play when you're talking about college recruiting. I, I think that for me, the, the expectations are higher on the defensive side of the ball than on the offensive side. It's why I've been, you know, so pleasantly surprised to see guys like, like Kyler Casper, like Dante Dowdell, like Ashton Cozart, you know, deciding to to come to the Ducks, even though they had some other uh, pretty notable offers, because our calling card with Dan Lanning has got to be defense. And if you want to save money when working on your car, making improvements, you want to go to Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. You can save time and money, two for one right there, when using Rock Auto, a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Go explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto part needs, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. They've got it all. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. I'd rather have a defensive lineman than a quarterback. I'd rather have both, right? If you can have both, I'd certainly rather have one than, than neither, of course, but I would love to see them get both. I don't necessarily expect them to because you have a lot of big time schools going after all these sorts of guys. And if their focus is on the quarterback, that's fine. I'm not going to be majorly concerned in that sense. But when you hire a coach like Dan Lanning, he puts together a staff that that includes somebody like Tosh Lupoy as the defensive coordinator. At some point, you should have the expectation as a Duck fan, in my view, of bringing in big time, high end defensive recruits. And these are the sorts of guys that that you're talking about when I make a statement like that, right? It's a five star in Mateo Uyunglele, high four star in Jaden Wayne, who's on the radar radar of schools like Alabama. David Hicks, the top defensive lineman in the country in the class of 2023. From an expectation standpoint, I, I just that's where my head is at. Is you know when they announced that Dan Lane would be the head coach, I thought, well, he should be bringing in some big time defensive players. And if that doesn't come to fruition in, in in a major way on the recruiting trail, to me, that'd be a little bit of a disappointment. And it doesn't mean that I'm just ignoring the offensive recruits or that I don't want them to pay any attention to that side of the ball. But I think when 
you put together the sort of defense that Dan Lanning did, which was certainly a principal reason as to why Oregon offered him the job and he accepted because he felt he could bring that sort of vision to Oregon and not the exact defense, but something at least similar to it. I had the thought of, okay, we should be bringing in some big time guys like that. That's what you hired him for. That's what you hired him to do. If you hire a really smart schematic coach who, you know, whose, whose reputation, someone like Chip Kelly is scoring a bunch of points, then you as a fan should expect that your team is going to score a bunch of points. And if you're not, then you need to look at it and assess and go, okay, why is this not happening? Can it happen in the future? Because this is kind of the the selling point for this guy as a, a football coach. And um, I, I think that's the first part of it. And the second part of it, and I've discussed this before here on the show, but it's worth reiterating. I think the defensive line is a big weakness going into the 2023 recruiting cycle, because after this year, you're certainly going to lose Brandon Dorless. You very well might lose uh, Sam Taimani. I think he's got two years left if he wants, perhaps. Uh, Popo Amavai, his future's up in the air. And you don't have that many other, you know, big time players. And if you're going to build a championship caliber defense, you have to have an elite defensive line. So I want to see them build in the trenches. I, I'm I'm glad they're bringing in that secondary depth. I think the linebacking units are, you know, uh, pretty set for the next couple of years. Though after this season, if so, if Sewell and Flo both go to the NFL, I think Flo has to stay healthy for a full season before he could really think about getting drafted, uh, at least in a in a very high round. But Let's say that happens, and I hope that happens, because if Flo is getting drafted, that means he was a stud this year. And, and we've seen glimpses of the potential of a guy like Justin Flo. He's one of the highest, he's the highest rated uh, linebacker Oregon's ever recruited, just a touch higher than, than Noah Sewell, and we know how good he is as well. So I want those guys to do very well, but I, I think the the group that's behind them, to me, I feel better about them than I do where, with with regards to Oregon secondary or the defensive line right now. So that, that's why if I had to choose between getting Dante Moore or getting like a David Hicks or a Mateo Uyunglele, I think I would take Moore over Wayne by just a, a little bit. But even if Bo Nix is one and done, either Ty Thompson or Jay Butterfield's got to be ready in 2023, right? I mean, I mean, one of them has got to be ready by that time, or else we would need to seriously take a look at, at the offensive staff. You don't have a guy ready by, by that point in time. So I, I think it's more of a roster need. I think from an expectation point point of view, that's the way that, that I was looking at Dan Lanning, the staff when, when they were hired and as they've been, uh, you know, putting themselves together as one cohesive unit, uh, as a staff to go out on, on the recruiting trail. And, you know, we'll see how it goes on, on Saturdays in the fall as well. That's, uh, not not as far away as we may think. We're we're at the latter part of June here. July will come around and it will be a pretty slow time. But then fall camp will pick up in August, and then that opener on my birthday, September third against Georgia. Hard for me to forget that date, and I know all you Oregon fans have that in your minds as well. Can not wait. Thanks for making this your first listen. Go make Lockdown Pack twelve your second. I'm hosting, talking about the Conference of Champions. I appreciate everyone listening. Have a wonderful rest of your day and go Ducks.